open the pages of God's word and consider God's love for Israel and Jerusalem. What does Jerusalem mean to God Almighty? Here it is in 2 Chronicles 7, 16. I, God, have chosen Jerusalem that my name might be there forever and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. What does that mean? That means that God is watching the city of Jerusalem every minute of the day and night. Not Washington, not Berlin, not the United Nations. The eyes of God are constantly on Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem, the Bible says, which I have chosen, I have put my name there forever. So every nation that attacks the city of Jerusalem is attacking God himself. Jerusalem is mentioned 811 times in Scripture, beginning with Abraham paying tithe to Melchizedek at Salem. Salem is the backside of Jerusalem in Genesis 14, 20. It is the ending in the glory and the beauty of Jerusalem in Revelation 21. How important is Jerusalem to King David, the man who was after God's own heart? King David says, if I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its cunning and let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. Think about that. David was a singer. David was a musician. If your right hand cannot play and your tongue cannot move to sing, life has no meaning. Life has no purpose. A musician who cannot play nor sing has no significance. David was saying, without Jerusalem, life for us has no meaning. Isaiah calls to Christians in Isaiah 62, 7, you who call upon the name of the Lord, that would be all of us. You who call on the name of the Lord, give yourself no rest. That means it should be a constant effort, not something you do once a year when you go to Jerusalem, if you go, but it should be a constant effort wherever you are. Give yourself no rest until he, God, establishes Jerusalem and makes her the praise of all the earth. First, recognize Jerusalem as the city of God. Recognize Jerusalem as the eternal and undivided capital of Israel. Moving on, the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem was Bible prophecy in action. Deuteronomy 28, God says, I will make you the head and not the tail. What does that mean? The head is the one who makes the decisions. For 1,800 years, the Jewish people were scattered across the earth. They could not make decisions about themselves. In 1948, they became a state. They became the head of all that they hoped to be. And now other nations are coming to them. America recognizing Jerusalem was recognizing the headship of Jerusalem. It was a prophetic event. When I walked off the stage from giving the benediction, a rabbi walked up to me and he said, now we can plan for the third temple. The third temple in Jewish theology is when Messiah comes. He's closer to the truth than he, than he knows. Isaiah 62, 1, for Zion's sake, I will not keep silent and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet. God's command to the church, if you love me, stand up and speak up for Israel. Stand up and speak up for Jerusalem. Isaiah writes, for Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest. Listen to the rest of Isaiah 62. You shall no longer be forsaken. He's talking to the Jewish people. And your land shall be called Beulah. And your land, which is Israel and not heaven, shall be married to God Almighty. Christians have been taught Beulah land is heaven. That may be to you. But Beulah land in God's word is Israel. Why? 
because Israel is God's firstborn son in Exodus chapter 4, 22. In the Bible, the Jewish people are the apple of God's eye. They are God's chosen people. They are God's covenant people. God Almighty entered into a blood covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that the land of Israel belonged to them forever. Genesis 17, 7, And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generations. Listen to these next words. For an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. That means forever and forever. That means right now. Israel does not occupy the land. They own the land, saith God. Israel is not a political issue. Israel is a Bible issue. When God created the heavens and the earth, he was the owner of the earth. And as the owner of the earth, he made a real estate contract with Abraham in the 17th chapter of Genesis that the land belonged to the Jewish people. Therefore, the United Nations and the European Union have no say in the future of Israel. That's all established in the Word of God. <laughs> Add to that that God says, I'm going to be their defender. In Psalms 121.4, he that keepeth Israel. The word keepeth is a military term. He that guards and defends Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. Israel has a unique national security. It's God in heaven. And he says, I will bless those who bless you and those who curse you, I will curse them. Whether it's a nation or a person, do you want to prosper? Do you want to prosper? David gives one of the clues in the Bible. Psalms 122.6, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love you. I have researched that word prosper, and it means prosper. <laughs> Consider Jerusalem in the past. Jerusalem has a long history. Jerusalem has been destroyed twice. It's been besieged 23 times. It's been attacked 52 times. It has been captured and recaptured 44 times. Jerusalem is the city of God, and it will be the capital city of earth's last empire in the future. Never forget God's boundless love for Jerusalem, because that's his city. Jerusalem is where Abraham bound Isaac and placed him on the altar of sacrifice selected by God Almighty. Abraham lifted the dagger to plunge it into the body of his son, and the angel stopped him. 3,000 years later on that same hill, God the Father placed his son of covenant on the altar of sacrifice, the old rugged cross, to cleanse us, to cleanse us from sin, to give us everlasting life, to give us peace that surpasses understanding. He put his son on that cross to give you joy that is unspeakable and full of glory. The Son went to the cross to give you divine healing for every sickness and disease on planet Earth. He went to the cross to give you hope and power and confidence in the darkest hours of your life. He went there to give you prosperity that the world didn't give and the world cannot take it away. Give the Lord praise and glory in this house. Jerusalem is where Jeremiah and Isaiah penned the principles of righteousness that became the moral foundations for Western civilization that our people in Washington are so desperately trying to ignore. Jerusalem is where David carried the head of Goliath he had killed with a slingshot. I checked with Rabbi Scheinberg, who is a Jewish historian and scholar deluxe, and I said, I've heard Preachers in my pulpit say what happened to the head of Goliath. What does Jewish history say happened to that head? And he said, David kept that head. He carried it to Jerusalem and he put it on a post on a road where all of the Jews could see it to give the message that if our God can defeat Goliath, he can defeat anything.
So I'm coming today to tell you that 3,000 years later, God placed his son, Jesus Christ, on an old rugged cross to remind the world that forever Satan is a defeated foe. We have victory over the world, the flesh and the devil. We have victory in the authority of Jesus' name. The battle you're going through right now, the victory is yours. Jerusalem is where Solomon built the second temple, considered one of the seven wonders of the world. If it were reassembled today, it would cost $1.5 billion to build that facility. Jerusalem is where Jesus was taken on the 40th day to be dedicated. Simeon, moved by the Holy Spirit, lifted Jesus up. And he said, Lord, let now your servant depart in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation. Listen, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Every demon in hell was shaking as that prophet held baby Jesus in the air. Why? Because this child was the way, the truth, and the life. This child was the son of Abraham, the son of David. The living God is still the chain breaker and the burden bearer. This baby boy could save your sons and daughters. This baby boy could calm the raging seas with the words, peace be still. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again. One day this baby boy is going to rule the nations of the world from the city of Jerusalem and of that kingdom there shall be no end. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Sometimes we get so caught up in the busyness of the day-to-day -day that we forget to do the simple things in life, such as exchanging a friendly greeting with our neighbors. It is time to be God's love in action, like the Good Samaritan. We are called to love our neighbors as ourselves. Does your life reflect His truth? We are called to be salt and light. Our actions and lifestyles need to reflect the light of Jesus to those around us. We are a living testimony of God's goodness. If we are not shining God's love on those around us, then who will they turn to? This month, with a special gift of any amount to the ministry, we'll send you a special Not By Bread Alone salt box. For your generous gift of $250 or more, we'll also send you a signed copy of Diana Hagee's commemorative cookbook, Not By Bread Alone, accompanied by an apron, cookbook stand, dish towel, and salt box. This set makes a special gift for a loved one. We are called to love our neighbors as ourselves. Call the number on the screen or go to jhm.org bread. The features of the new Jerusalem, the glory of the light of God will fill the earth. Revelation 21, 23, the city had no need of sun or moon to shine on it for the glory of God illuminated it. We speak of Jesus as being the light of the world, but I assure you the day is going to come when the whole of the world will be illuminated by the presence of Jesus. Think about that. The question is, are you going to be there? Because there are people who are not going there. Not everyone singing I'll fly away is going to fly away. If there's sin in your life, you don't know Jesus. If you haven't made a commitment to him, I'm not talking about getting religion. Religion is nothing. Religion is ritual without righteousness. Ritual is what you can do habitually without even thinking about the Lord. Righteousness is obeying the word of God. That's why David said, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against God. That word, thy word have I hidden in my heart actually translates the word of God have I memorized that I might not sin against God. You know it well enough that when your conduct starts going one way, the Holy Spirit reached out and grabbed you back and said, that's not the way according to the word of God. Consider the war against the Jewish people recorded in history and in the word of God. Father Flannery, in his award-winning book, The Anguish of the Jews, writes, The sin of anti-Semitism contains many sins. The sin of anti-Semitism 
is a denial of the Christian faith. It's a failure of Christian hope and the death of Christian love, end of quote. There's no such thing really as Christian anti-Semitism, and here's why. Christianity is driven by the law of love. Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. The Bible says love is of God, and they who have not love have not God. Did you hear that verse? Those who do not have love do not have God. Anti-Semitism is based on hate. So love and hate cannot come out of the same mouth. If a person has hate toward the Jewish people, that person is evil. Your mind is evil. Your life is evil. Your soul is evil. Everything you touch will become poisoned. I teach you this concept because not one Christian in a hundred can answer this following question. How did Christianity that, that was birthed by Jesus and his 12 disciples, all Jewish, in the first century, become the Christianity in the third century committed to killing the Jews in Europe? I teach you this because for almost 2,000 years, the Jewish people were murdered, robbed, their women were raped by someone carrying a cross and holding a sword in the other hand. It's the war against the Jewish people. Many of you, most of you have never heard this before, so listen closely. We are familiar with the persecution of the Jews in Egypt and the drowning of the Jewish male children so that the Jewish girls, when they grew up, there would be no one to marry but Egyptian men. Pharaoh's objective was to destroy the Jewish people in one generation by assimilation. Now why? Why was the force of evil trying to wipe the Jewish people out? Because the Jewish people would be the people that would bring the Bible to the world. They would give us the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Jewish people gave us the Old Testament. They gave us King David. They gave us Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. They gave us St. Paul, who is the founder of the New Testament church. Simply said, without the Jewish contribution to us, we would have nothing. We're familiar with anti-Semitism of Haman, the politician in the Old Testament, a member of the swamp, if you will, the master of fake news, who used his political influence with the king to hang all the Jews in Persia. And believe me, at, at this point in history, the majority of the Jews were living in Persia. He promised the king that he would bring all the wealth of the Jews into the king's treasure if he would just permit him to hang them. Politics and money, some things never change. Right now, some of our political leaders are on China's payroll. Think about that. You know, you can't really blame the Chinese. They're communists. That's what they do. But what you can blame is the corruption of America's politicians who make that possible. You should remember their names, and the next time you vote, vote them out of office. God exposed Haman, and he and his sons were hung on the gallows he built for the Jewish people. I will curse those who curse you. In 70 AD, the Romans under General Titus besieged Jerusalem. Josephus states that one million Jews starved to death. A hundred thousand Jewish men were taken to Rome to build the Colosseum where Christians would be fed to lions. Now listen, this concerns you. This is the birth of global Christian anti-Semitism. In 325, the Roman church called for the Council of Nicaea, an empire-wide council of church leaders who separated Christianity from Judaism. On purpose, they declared war on the Jewish people. Then came the eight crusades. When a Jewish person hears the word crusade, he or she is reminded of murder, rape, robbery of their Jewish ancestors for hundreds of years during the Middle of Ages. Those crusaders were not holy men. They were not men of honor. They were nothing less than the army of the Roman church. Then came the Spanish Inquisition. 
in which 300,000 Jews were murdered or exiled by the Roman church. Then came Martin Luther. Martin Luther said that the Jewish people should have their tongues cut out through the back of their heads. Hitler loved Martin Luther's pamphlet and reprinted it in 1935 as required reading for all of Germany. Hitler invaded Poland on, Hitler, on, on Luther's birthday in tribute to him. The war against the Jewish people produced the horror of the Holocaust. Six million people were systematically slaughtered because of the seeds of theological hatred planted by John Chrysostom, produced a harvest of hatred that systematically slaughtered six million Jews. Adolf Hitler attended a Roman church school as a child and was mentally poisoned by the mantra, the Jews are the killers of Christ. Listen to me, that was a lie and it's still a lie. It's not the truth. The poison of anti-Semitism in now sweeping America. Why am I preaching this sermon? Because God says, I will curse those who curse you. And anything less than a blessing is a curse. There is no middle ground here. And right now, the poison of, um, of anti-Semitism is surging through the bloodstream of America in our colleges and universities are filled with professors teaching the next generation to hate the Jewish people. There are pastors in America's pulpit preaching replacement theology that God has replaced the Jewish people with the church and the Jewish people no longer matter. If you go to a church like that, go find yourself another church. There are members of the House of Representatives who have made anti-Semitic statements that will bring the judgment of God to our nation if there's not time of repentance. Stop voting for these godless anti-Semites. Remember the words of God Almighty, I will curse those who curse you. That includes America. That may include people who are in this audience those who are watching by television, who have knowingly or unknowingly embraced anti-Semitic things. It's urgent that today's Christian understanding how crucial a role Israel and the Jewish people are to God's plan for the future. I believe America's national security is linked to how we treat the nation of Israel. I do because history proves that. From the book of Genesis until Adolf Hitler, history proves that. I will curse those who curse you is not a nursery rhyme. It's the law of God, and the law of God will be honored. Do you want the blessing of God on your life? Do you want the favor of God? Do you want the prosperity of God? then pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Those who love you will prosper. Would you please stand? Would you please stand? It is imperative that Christians today understand the Christian role and the Jewish people play in God's plan for mankind now and in the future. Therefore, it is my continued mission in life to educate America and the church about God's truth concerning the Jewish people. Right now, we're asking the Lord in a very special way to move in this audience and those of you who are watching by television I'm going to pray a prayer, and I want you to join me in this prayer. We have never done this quite like this in the history of our church, but this is a prayer to God, asking for his forgiveness and not praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Let's pray. Our most gracious heavenly Father, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, 
creator of heaven and earth, king of the universe. We ask for your forgiveness for the sin of anti-Semitism in all of its forms in America, in our churches, in our colleges and universities, in the halls of Congress and in our own personal lives. God of heaven, raise up your righteous wrath and defend the state of Israel. Bring a revival of righteousness to America. Bring a revival of righteousness to the church. Bring a revival of holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. In the authority of your name we pray and we ask it. And all of God's children and Cornerstone Church said, Amen. When you speak the word of God, you are releasing the blessing of the Lord into every part of your life. You are putting God in charge of the situation and putting the devil on notice that you are a child of the King. Stay tuned because at the end of this program, Pastor Hagee will speak a blessing over you and your family. On Saturday, October 7th, while Israeli citizens celebrated the end of Sukkot, over 1,500 Iran-backed Hamas terrorists wage a coordinated and vicious attack against the nation of Israel. This is our time to show love and generosity for a nation suffering one of its darkest hours. October 7th was the deadliest day in Jewish history since the Holocaust. But make no mistake, Israel is shaken, but it is not defeated. Proceeds raised will address the humanitarian crisis resulting from this massacre. First responders and medical facilities are overwhelmed, and we need your help. Go to jhm.org slash standwithisrael to donate today and show your solidarity for the state of Israel and the Jewish people. Let it be known that Israel, you are not alone. You've been watching Hagee Ministries. If you need prayer, call our prayer line or visit our website. And now, your blessing with Pastor John Hagee. And now may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. And may the Lord make his face to shine upon you. And may the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his peace. May you go from this place committed to pray for the peace of Jerusalem because it means much to the Lord and because it means much for our world and our nation. May the prosperity of the Lord rest upon the righteous who bless the house of Israel. And may your house be blessed and your life be blessed and your business be blessed because of the blessing of God for blessing the house of Israel. In the authority of Jesus' name we pray and all of God's children said praise the Lord.